What's the deal, y'all? This your man, King Eric, the media assassin, coming at y'all with another video. Be sure to subscribe and the like button for me. So, I want to talk about this track here, which is probably one of the most overlooked songs and probably one of the most important songs throughout this whole East-West issue that happened between Bad Boy and Death Row Records. And I'm talking about NY87. Now, the reason why I'm thinking that a lot of people, a lot of outlets don't want to cover this song because it brings a different form of context that the media loves to parrot. What do you mean by that? They love to parrot the fact that Tupac got shot out there. He went to death row. He started acting crazy, blaming Biggie and Bad Boy. We wanted nothing. Nobody else at death row wanted no, nothing to do with Tupac's issues. We had beef. We didn't say anything. Everything with, 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 that was with Biggie and Puffy was all love. This song right here just, just kills that whole argument. And you notice nobody in these platforms, even with all the dialogue, when he had Corrupt up there, he didn't even mention this song. When Corrupt came up there talking about, man, we ain't want no beef with Puffy and Big. They are boys and all that. Why you ain't bring up NY87? Corrupt, I'm mean, like, dad's a corrupt, diss them niggas. Like, you diss, you mock Biggie, I mean, you mock Pop, sleeping with Faith in the beginning of the song. Corrupt went in with the first verse, which was dope. Dissing Biggie, dissing Tribe Call Quest, dissing Channel Live, dissing J. Rue the Damager, dissing all of New York. Then he had Tupac up there. He just said, he just flat out said it. He was going at all of them. I think this was recorded after um, the trailer got shot up. But even when you listen to that song, them niggas knew what they were doing, man. Y'all was trolling New York City. This was, And why would you put out a song like that? The song was already, I could take the song as probably a trip, but the video itself, when you going up there kicking buildings, y'all knew what y'all was doing. So, then, that's what read the retaliation to the trailer getting shot. So, Tupac, being a team player, got angry. Because, you know, he's like, yo, you shot my boys. He mentioned that on the song. So, this is where Tupac got angry. He was like, y'all sitting there in the studio with me? We talking about, we talking all this type of shit? We talking about riding on them? But yet you going on Angie Martinez and you talk about I got love for Biggie and Pop, but yet you got diss records with us, but yet the record never came out. They never put the record out. The same way where they never put out the Dr. Dre Murder Was the Case intro, where he was going at the East Coast for how he felt for shabbing them. But you were shouting Tupac out. It's like behind the scenes, a lot of this stuff is really coming to the light. And see, they can't go around spinning that narrative no more. And but unfortunately, you got journalists today that's not really equipped with what really happened. They didn't really live what really happened. So therefore, they're just gonna go on and be like, "Ho ho ho, ho ho, yeah, that was real. That's real talk." But you didn't really know what's going on. Now, I'm not in that lane to ask those people that type of questions because you know. If I was to have Corrupt on the show, which we will soon, I'm not going to bring up any of that stuff because that stuff been done to death. Anything that we talk about regarding Death Row is going to be the great records that they made while they was on the label, the great moments, the, the dope moments of the culture. I'm not trying to be the one, the hundredth person to, to build a channel off the negativity surrounding that label. We got to look at the contributions also. We got to talk about the fun times as well. Because at the end of the day, we're interviewing musicians. We're not interviewing street niggas. But unfortunately, we live in a time where this is what the audience want to see every single day. So people are now switching up their, um, they're now switching up their styles. They're trying to compete with the Vlads. They're trying to, they're trying to do what Art of Dialogue do. They're trying to get the tea. When in reality, you got to find a lane for yourself, man. You got to find a lane for yourself. But going back to what we're saying here, 
that's why Tupac was wrong, was right. Cause he's like, y'all in the studio with me. We recording all this shit, all this crazy shit. Y'all on, t we doing the house of blues. You over there laughing at me, mocking at Biggie. Now you gonna say that's your friend? Come on, Snoop. Come on now. But I'm gonna tell y'all what it really is. P. Diddy is a very powerful figure in this business. When it comes to <coughs> revolt, getting these deals, Puff is still a go-to guy, and is he has some he has some heavy clout. So they don't really want to burn any bridges anymore. So they want to keep on painting that narrative of man, we was trying to stop Pop. It got out of control. We won't try to get involved. Bullshit. Y'all niggas was in it too. But they don't want to revisit those old stories. And understandably so. But we got to be truthful out here. And unfortunately, a lot of people that's within the journalism realm don't really know the truth. And if they know the truth, they don't want to ask the questions because they want to protect the relationship. But that's just my opinion on it, man. NY87 was a hard disc. And it remained under vote for a reason, so it's no telling. It's no telling what other stuff is in that vault that, that was said. So that's my opinion on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Subscribe, hit the like button, peace.